I'd like to call the public hearing to order. It's about 6.35. I'm going to turn this over to the town manager. <clears throat> Mr. Clark. Excuse me. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> uh, just to welcome this evening. I see in the crowd that we have a good turnout from department heads, so if there are any specific questions in regards to uh, specific budgets, hopefully one of the department heads or myself or myself should be able to uh, respond to your questions. This is the purpose of a, uh, a public hearing. Uh, this is required by uh, the, the town charter, uh, section 10-5-1. Uh, the town shall uh, publish in one or more newspapers of general circulation in the town a general summary of the budget and a notice stating the time and places where the budget copies of the budget are available and the date, time, and place not less than two weeks after such publication when a public hearing on the budget shall be held. So in accordance with that section, uh, this is the public hearing. We did advertise the public hearing in the Southbridge Evening News, and I will read the, the posting. And the, uh, it was posted initially on Monday, May 7th, and then secondarily on Monday, May 14th. The posting reads as follows. The Town of Southbridge McKinnon Council Chambers Town Hall Public Hearing Agenda, Monday, May 21st, 2012, 6.30. Public hearing in regards to the FY 2013 town budget. General government, $11,466,460. Public safety, $5,417,067. Public works, $1,825,697. Human services, $1,404,435. Bay Path, $1,117,046. The school department, 23,754,366. The Water Enterprise Fund, $3,352,072. I'm sorry, Sewer Enterprise Fund, $3,352,072. The Water Enterprise, $3,664,515 for a total amount of $52,1,658. We have had copies of the budget available for inspection in both the manager's office and in the town clerk's office dur during normal town hall hours, as well as Jacob Edwards Library during regular library hours. Uh, this evening also at the, uh, I guess the head table uh, in front of us here are the uh, members of the finance team, uh, Will Knoyer, uh, principal assessor, Karen Harnoy's finance director, and on my far right, on folks' left, uh, Mindy Ernst Fournier, the town treasurer collector. So we have um, read the notice into the record, and at this point I would recognize anyone wishing to speak in regards to the budget. If you would just acknowledge with a hand, or you can walk to the microphone. going once. Again, if anyone has any questions concerning or pertaining to the budget that they wish to ask, we do have staff that is here and available to respond to any questions. Um, anyone? Going twice. I want to pause for dramatic effect. But um, Thirdly, once again, just I know the practice here in the community is to give three offerings. So again, I will offer for the third time. This is, the purpose of this public hearing is to respond to any questions that people may have in regards to the FY13 town budget. So for a third and final time, is there anyone that would like to ask a question? Seeing none, and I think Madam Chair, I've been more than fair with the, the amount of time given. Um, at this point, I would adjourn the public hearing and defer to you for commencement of the regular council meeting scheduled for this evening. We will adjourn the public hearing <coughs> and commence with the town council meeting. I'm going to give us a little bit of a break. We'll have a, a five minute break and then we will start the meeting.
Councilor Livingood. Okay. Councilor Micucci. Present. Councilor McDonald. They okay. may be running late. Okay. Councilor Nicola. Councilor Regis. Present. Councilor Spinelli. Here. Councilor Vandal. Present. Seven here. Thank you. Agenda item number three, consider and accept the council minutes of Monday, May 7th, 2012 meeting. So moved. Second. Do I have any discussion or corrections? Okay, can we have a roll call on that, please? Councilor Langevin? Yes. Um, Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Seven yes? Thank you. Agenda item number four, subcommittee reports A, general government. And this is also broken down. We had a joint general government and PPP meeting um, on May 9th. Councillor Spinelli. A meeting of the, thank you very much, Madam Chair. A meeting of the general government subcommittee was held on Wednesday, May 9th, 2012 in the Rice Conference Room. In attendance were Chairman Spinelli, committee members, Councillor Vandal, Councillor Regis, and citizen members, Stephanie DiMartino, uh, and Gabriel LaFleche. Also in attendance were Councillor Nicola, Councillor Clements, Councillor Marcucci, Town Manager Clark, Karen Harnoy, Mindy Ernst Fournier, Will Canoyer, Police Chief Charette, Assistant, Assistant Fire Chief DeFranzo, Acting Fire yeah, Chief DeFranzo, Roger Cowett, Estelle Cowett, and Monique Mana. Meeting was called to order at 6.30 p.m. Agenda item number one, review and potentially vote the RFP for the sale of 62 Pleasant Street. Mr. Clark discussed the updated RFP dated May 4th, 2012. The RFP is basically unchanged except for rating ranges. These ranges are listed on page 11. A motion was made by Council Regis and seconded by Mr. LaFleche with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the RFP for the sale of 62 Pleasant Street Vote by a show of hands, all in favor, five to nothing. Agenda item number two. Review and potentially vote the RFP for the sale of 70 Foster Street. Mr. Clark stated this is the same as agenda item number one. Rating ranges are listed on page 11. Mr. Clark stated that two parties have expressed interest in this property but want the roof to be fixed. Council of Andal stated he would not support this with any repairs. It should be sold as is. Motion was made by Council Regis and seconded by Mr. LaFleche with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the RFP for the sale of 70 Foster Street. Vote by a show of hands. All in favor, four to one. Council of Vandal opposed. Agenda item number three, discuss and vote to authorize the town manager and town attorney to sell by RFP nine lots on commercial drive, individually or collectively. Mr. Clark stated this appraisal was done by Allied Appraisal Associates of New England Incorporated. Three options were laid out. One would be to sell the entire 10.79 acres as one lot. The second would be to divide the area into four lots of variant acreage. And the third would be to sell them as nine separate lots. The value for this 10.79 acre parcel is totaled at $290,000, with the hypothetical market value for the divided parcels sold individually to be $390,000. Mr. Clark is asking the council's approval for the flexibility to sell these lots at either of the above three options or variations thereof. The motion was made by Council Regis and seconded by Mr. LaFleche with a favorable recommendation to council to authorize the town manager and town attorney to sell by RFP nine lots on commercial drive, individually or collectively, with a targeted minimum total sale value of $270,000 toward the 10.79 acres ANR, and that the town manager and town attorney be authorized to complete all necessary closing terms to effectuate said closing. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor, five to nothing. <coughs> For information purposes only, Mr. Clark stated he has received a letter from the Republican Town Committee to fill the vacant Republican Registrar position. Mr. Clark stated that he typically goes with the recommendation of the party committee chair. Motion was made by Councilor Regis and seconded by Mr. LaFleche to add an agenda item. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor, five to nothing. 
New agenda item number four. Vote to approve the appointment of Richard T. Nash to the Board of Registrars. Mr. Clark stated that Mr. Jane's letter expressed the Republican Town Committee's desire that Richard T. Nash be appointed to the Board of Registrar to fill the term vacated by Mr. Dyer. Motion was made by Councilor Regis and seconded by Mr. LaFleche with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the appointment of Richard T. Nash to the Board of Registrars to complete the term vacated by James Dyer expiring June 30th, 2012, and to appoint Mr. Nash for an additional three-year term expiring June 30th, 2015. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor, five to nothing. The motion to adjourn was made by Ms. DiMartino and seconded by Mr. LaFleche. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor, five to nothing. The meeting was adjourned at 7.05 p.m. Immediately after that meeting, there was a joint meeting of the General Government Subcommittee and the Persons of Protections and Property Subcommittee. The joint meeting of the General Government Subcommittee and Protection of Persons and Property Subcommittee was held on Wednesday, May 9, 2012 in the Rice Conference Room. In attendance were Chairman Spinelli, Chairman Langevin, committee members Councilor Vandal, Councilor Regis, and citizen members Stephanie DiMartino, DiMartino Gabriel LaFleche, Roger Cowett, and Monique Mano. Also in attendance were Councilor Nicola, Councilor Clements, Councilor Marcucci, Town Manager Clark, Karen Harnoy, Mindy Ernst Fournier, Will Knoyer, Police Chief Charette. Acting. It's one of those mental breakdowns. Acting Fire Chief DeFranzo <laughs> and Estelle Cowett. Chairman Spinelli acted as the co-chair, called the meeting to order at 7.10. Agenda item number one, discuss and vote to approve Schedule One Classification and Compensation Plan proposed May 12, 2012 to be effective July 1, 2012 and to submit to Town Council for ratification at its May 21, 2012 FY 2013 budget meeting. Mr. Clark stated he has tried to mirror the payment schedule of the union employees. Schedule 1 has a 1% increase adjustment. The only change has been the addition of the cable access category. Also, adjustments have been made to the S3 through <coughs> S13 schedule to be in closer alignment with union personnel. Motion was made by Councilor Langevin and seconded by Mr. LaFleche with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve Schedule 1 Classification and Compensation Plan proposed May 12, 2000 proposed May 2012 to be effective July 1, 2012. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor, eight to nothing. Agenda item number two, discuss and vote to approve Schedule 5 elected and appointed personnel proposed May 2012 to be effective July 1, 2012, and to submit to Town Council for ratification at its May 21, 2012 FY 2000 budget meeting. Mr. Clark stated the adjusted Schedule 5 shows a 1% increase with the exclusion of the call fire department stipends, which was changed in at a previous meeting. Councilor Langevin stated that the rate for the chaplain should be the same as the captain. Councilor Langevin also stated he would like to see a larger increase for election workers and asked if the budget could be looked at for this purpose. Councilor Marcucci asked for clarification of the call department stipends. Acting Chief Mark DeFranzo explained the duties of the captain and the lieutenants and the educational certification of the firefighters and EMTs. Mr. Clark stated the chaplain rate will change to reflect the same rate as captain. Councilor Nicola stated she would like to see longevity taken off the table for the call fire department. Motion was made by Councilor Regis and seconded by Councilor Langevin with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve Schedule 5, elected and appointed personnel as amended to reflect the change for the chaplain's rate and the removal of John longevity for call fire department. Vote by a show of hands. All in favor, seven to one. Councilor Vandal opposed. Motion to adjourn was made by Ms. DiMartino and seconded by Councilor Regis. Show of hands, all in favor, eight to nothing. The meeting was adjourned at 8.05 p.m. Madam Chair, we have a general government subcommittee meeting scheduled for May 30th, 7 p.m., Rice Conference Room.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Um, B, DPW, Councillor Vandal. Um, no report, no meeting scheduled. Thank you. Thank you. C, Education and Human Services, Councillor Clements. Thank you, Madam Chair. A meeting of the EHS subcommittee was held Tuesday, May 15, 2012, in the Weiser Conference Room. In attendance were myself, Councillor Marcucci, Councillor McDonald, and citizens members Holly Christo and Michael Jeans. Also in attendance were Councillor Nicola, Town Manager Clark, Amelia Pelequin, Paul Zotos, James Sotilli, Brian Alves, Robert Cantera, Kevin Buxton, Sean Moriarty, John Pulaski, Hugh McKinnon, Rafael Fernandez, and Dimitri Kaspersen. I called the meeting at 7 o'clock. Agenda item one, discuss and vote to approve the conclusion to the open meeting law complaint submitted by Anthony McBinema regarding EHS meeting 8 to 11, quote, failing to include sufficient detail in the notice of minutes and to accept revised minutes as amended. 5112. Mr. Clark stated that after receiving the letter from the Attorney General's office, he spoke to the recording clerk and she amended the minutes so that we would be in compliance. Those amended minutes will be sent to the Attorney General's office. Councillor McDonald stated that there was a violation stated by the General's Attorney General's Office of insufficient detail and that no other violations occurred. Actually, I believe I stated that, if we want to correct that. So. Um, a motion was made by Holly Cristo and seconded by Councillor Marcucci with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve the revised minutes as amended, 5-1-12. Vote by show of hands. All in favor, 5-0. Agenda item number two, update on the reorganization of cable operations. Mr. Clark stated he has hired permanent staff for the cable operations. He introduced Brian Alves as the new station manager, production director. Mr. Alves stated his qualifications and experience. Mr. Clark stated Mike Montigny as the production coordinator slash editor and Stacy Reno as the secretary slash office manager. Mr. Clark thanked Barry Davis for his services as interim station manager. Mr. Clark provided two playback snapshots of the shows played by the cable station for April 2011 through May 2011 and April 2012 through May 2012, showing how the programming has increased by 10 shows in 2011 to 38 shows for the same period in 2012. See attached. Mr. Zotos asked several questions pertaining to the cable committee. Mr. James asked whether the subject of the cable operation being a nonprofit operation had been taken off the table. Mr. Clark stated the question is not off the table and now that all the components are in place with the organization, a review will be done after some time has passed under the new management to see what will be done best for the cable operations. Mr. Clark said that with the new middle high school, we will have a media studio and looking to upgrade the studio we have at Town Hall. Mr. Cantera addressed a question for Mr. Sotilli regarding a request Mr. So Sotilli made to the Cable Committee through the Town Manager. Mr. Sotilli asked regarding accusations made on the Internet regarding indirect cost. Mr. Clark explained indirect cost and stated that indirect cost has gone down from $30,000 to $25,000 as the cable operation becomes more independent. Agenda item three, trash enforcement efforts update. Mr. Clark gave a brief overview on the trash enforcement effort. He said one of the concerns from the citizens was that no warnings were given. One of the recommendations from the Board of Health was to turn first offenses into final warnings. Information is being reviewed by the Board of Health and recommendations are being made to the municipal hearing officer. The new effort is to hone in on those properties that do not respond to the educational effort. Mr. James stated that the $250 fine is too high and asked how that amount could be changed. Councillor Clements said it would be have, to, have to be done as a motion at another subcommittee meeting. Mr. Clark said that at some time, maybe 20 or more years ago, the $250 fee was set by Council to get people's attention and get them to comply with the law. This amount was set for abandoned junk cars, but many other items have now fallen under this 21D law. Mr. Clark stated he has gotten recycling numbers from the Board of Health. Under the old system, recycling was 16 to 18 percent, and on the week of 5-7-12, the recycling rate was 40.54 percent. Mr. Buxton asked the council, review section eight, the council to review Section 8 of the Landfill Agreement. A motion was made by Mr. Jaynes, seconded by Councillor Micucci, with a favorable recommendation to entertain an agenda item at a future meeting of the EHS subcommittee to reduce the fee schedule for trash violations. Vote by show of hands. All in favor, 5-0. Agenda item four, recycling concepts by Mr. Buxton. Mr. Buxton made a presentation on his recycling concept, and the, attached, uh, the presentation is available if somebody wants it uh, with, this, with these minutes at the town hall. He did a very good job, and we appreciate his efforts with that, and we are reviewing uh, many of his suggestions. A motion to adjourn was made by Council McDonald, seconded by Council Marcucci. All in favor, 5-0. We adjourn the meeting at 8.50 p.m. Respectfully submitted, Evelyn Rivera, recording clerk. And we currently have a, a meeting <coughs> that's uh, going to be posted for Tuesday, May 29th. Um, the time is to be announced because it may be starting at 6.30, not 7. I'm just going to work that out, and that will be posted in plenty of time for everyone. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, D, Planning and Development. Go ahead. 
The meeting of the Planning and Development Subcommittee was held on Monday, May 8, 2012 in the Larry Hyman Conference Room. <coughs> in attendance were Chairman Livingood, Subcommittee Members Councilor Spinelli, Councilor Clements, Councilor Nicola, and Citizen Member Evelyn Petrelli. Also in attendance were Councilor Regis, Councilor Vandal, Town Manager Clark, Cassandra Ackley, and Roger Cowett. Chairman Livingood called the meeting to order at 7 p.m. Agenda item number one, to accept the petition from the town manager requesting that the town council vote its intention to lay out commercial drive as a public way and to refer to the planning board for non-binding recommendation. Mr. Clark stated the roadway has been completed, but now it needs to be accepted before lots can be sold. Mr. Clark stated we can market the parcels concurrently with the public way process. Motion was made by Councillor Spinelli and seconded by Mrs. Petrelli with a favorable recommendation to Council to accept the petition from the town manager requesting that the town council vote its intention to lay out commercial drive as a public way and to refer to the planning board for non-binding recommendation. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor, five to nothing. A motion was made by Councillor Spinelli and seconded by Evan Petrelli to add a motion to the agenda. All in favor, five to nothing. A motion was made by Councillor Spinelli and seconded by Evan, Evelyn Petrelli with a favorable recommendation to Council that un unless significant changes occur, all subsequent votes shall go directly to Council as outlined in the attached timeline. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor, five to nothing. A motion was made by Councillor Spinelli and seconded by Mrs. Petrelli. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor, five to nothing. Meeting was adjourned at 6.40 p.m. Thank you, Councillor. Madam Chair? Yes. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Just um, for clarification, if we could just kind of review the dates here and the times. The meeting was adjourned prior to its starting. And I don't remember, was Monday, May 7th or May 8th? I don't know. But It was Monday, May 7th, May but it 7th. started at 6. Oh, and it started I'm sorry, at 6. OK. Thank you. That's right. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Thank you, Councillor. Um, agenda item number E is uh, protection of persons and property. Councillor Langevin. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. A meeting of protection of persons and property subcommittee uh, was held on Wednesday, May 9, 2012, in the Rice Conference Room. In attendance were Chairman Langevin, Committee Member Councillor Regis, and Citizen Members Roger Cowett and Monique Manor. Also in attendance were One, discuss and vote to accept the proposal with the Public Safety Consultant LLC of Shrewsbury, Mass., for the assessment of up to five candidates for police sergeant. Chief Charette explained the procedure following, followed by PSC. This is a third party group that do all the evaluations needed for candidates for police sergeant, therefore taking the politics out of the equation. They assess all the uh, candidates and provide the names of the candidates and they actually walk in and do the job. Chief Charette invited the council to go and view this process. Council Vandal stated he does not want to inherit this proposal year after year. Mr. Clark and Chief Charette said this is a one-time exam whose assessment is good for two years. A motion was made by Council Regis, second by Mr. Cowett with a favorable recommendation to the council to accept the proposal between the town of Southbridge and public safety consultant LLC of Shrewsbury Mash for the assessment of up to five candidates for a police sergeant in the amount of $4,950 according to the scope of work listed in the document. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, three to one. Monique Manor opposed. Agenda item two, update on hiring process for police officers. Mr. Clark stated candidates are being interviewed for the three positions available. Names will be brought forward shortly. A motion to adjourn was made by Mr. Cowett, second by Councilor Regis. 
Vote by show of hands, all in favor, four to nothing. Meeting adjourned at 8.55 p.m. Respectfully submitted, Evelyn Rivera, recording clerk. Madam Chair, I do have a meeting scheduled for tomorrow night at 6.30 in the Rice Conference Room to uh, look over th candidates that are bring, being brought forward by the police chief for positions that are vacant, not new positions, and also uh, some auxiliary police officers um, for us to review. And that's all I have at this point. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Agenda item number five, Chairwoman's announcements. I just have two. Um, as Councillor uh, McDonald had brought up in the last council meeting, and I'd like to just remind everybody that the Memorial Day Parade will be held on Monday, May 28th. We received something in our packets from Mike, Michael Trombley, Southbridge Veterans Council. If you in, um, intend to walk in the parade, you will meet at 8.30 at the town hall. The parade will actually start at 9 a.m. sharp and should, com should be completed by, by no later than noon time. And as always, the vet veterans of foreign wars on Everett Street will, will have, a, um, have refreshments after the parade. And secondly, there is another meeting for the uh, tornado community meal scheduled for Thursday, May 24th, 6.30, up here in the, uh, the, room, the room on the side over here. And I believe, Councillor Clements, you had something you wanted to add to that. I'll, I'll uh, you. give you the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate that. I just know the meeting may go long and would like to get the information out. Um, I just want to point out, you, we've been working on this. The committee's been working for the past week or so, and uh, it, it's coming right along, and we're very excited about what we're planning for June 1st. And I just um, wanted to uh, comment on a few things, that uh, many communities are marking the state with some type of tribute or celebration. They see this as a time to come together once again, not out of fear, but out of a sense of community. And according to the Riverside Community Care, who is providing outreach for Worcester and Hamden areas affected by the 2011 tornado, for many, sharing their stories, their experiences will help. Whether you are a survivor or one of the many who volunteered in the rebuilding effort, you were affected. I quote an article that was in the news, and I believe it was May 8th, under an article that said, Mass Support Network helps citizens cope one year after tornado. And it was in regards to this group coming in um, from, it's a government supported group that was coming in to, to help those who were affected and they were having a meeting on Thursday, May 17th. And the quote says, an anniversary is a great time to reflect on one's strengths in the rebuilding process and to celebrate all of the progress made since the previous year, end quote. So we hope you will join us on June 1st. Tell us your stories, help us to understand what you have been through and what you are still dealing with. We have received a number of donations to help provide this meal and are very grateful for the generosity that has been shown. If any of you would like to share your talents, perhaps uh, you have uh, something you would, maybe you'd like to perform a, a, a tribute song for us. We, do, we will have music that evening for a little background for the, uh, for the evening to make it a little more enjoyable. Or perhaps you want to make a donation to this night. Um, to make it even more special for those attending, please contact myself or Stephanie DiMartino. There will be a posting on the cable channel shortly. It'll look something like this. We have the flyers out. We've been uh, going around. We had uh, Mindy and, and Stephanie and uh, Emma and a few others went around this past weekend and, and visited personally each of the homes that were affected and many others to hand out flyers. Um, there'll be a posting, like I said, on the uh, cable channel as well as the town site for information. And uh, we are also putting together a, a photo tribute that will be shown that evening at the community center. And if you're interested in, in sending us some of your photos, uh, you can send them to Tornado Picks, P I C S, 2011 at yahoo.com, oh, excuse me, at hotmail.com. And we will, um, we're going to put that together and uh, just, again, to commemorate the day, commemorate the date and, uh, and the people here of our good town. Um, we're getting a lot, of, a lot of calls on this, uh, a lot of outreach coming in and asking if we're doing something a lot of the other communities, as I said, are. So you are welcome to join us for this community meal, and I thank everybody who's, who's supporting this right now and coming out and working hard to bring this meal to you. Thank you, Madam Chair, for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. I'd like to turn it over now to agenda item number six, town manager's announcements. Mr. Clark. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. I have uh, only two uh, this evening. I'll make them quick. Uh, the Board of Health is actually, uh, the Southbridge Health Department is running a uh, promotion that we have run over the last couple of years. Uh, we do have rain barrels available. <clears throat> if you like one, uh, you can order. Uh, you have to place the order with the Health Department by Monday, June 4th to reserve your barrel. For more information, you can go on to the website, www.thinkreduce.com, or call the Health Department at 508-764-4252. The distribution day for the barrels are going to be on Thursday, June 7th from 6 to 6.30 at the Community Center, 153 Chestnut Street. And on a similar topic, they have a uh, rotating composter that's available also for $75. It's a 55-gallon uh, uh, food container barrel to uh, assist in the, the um, composting of food products. And in terms of that, the distribution day is the same day and the same time. And if interested, please contact uh, the Board of Health or the Health Department, again, 508-764-4252 or www.thinkreduce.com. And then my second is just a, a quick one. We did receive an uh, email <clears throat> into, um, into the DPW just uh, thanking us for uh, getting the roads swept. Uh, I don't know if this is record time or not, but certainly the mild winter, there wasn't as much to clean up. But with the, um, the sweeping crews out there, we did have everything cleaned up as of last Friday. So just to let folks know that we were able to get that effort done fairly quickly and efficiently this year. And I do appreciate the efforts of the operators as well as the, uh, the management staff down at DPW. That concludes my comments this evening, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Okay, agenda item number seven is a swearing in presentation <coughs> portion. And I don't believe we have anything on the agenda this evening for that. So I'm going to move ahead to <clears throat> agenda item number eight, Citizens Forum. If there are any citizens in the audience who wish to step forward, please give your name and state your address. Thank you. Hello. Uh, Dan Butler, 35 Brookside Road. Um, I had two, two things tonight, um, totally unrelated. But um, first of all, I appreciate what you, you said, Ms. Clements. Um, Pretty much all I've asked all along, and all our neighbors have asked, like I've said, since the beginning of the tornado, just don't forget us. And we, you know, some of us appreciate it. Some are having a hard time with it. I don't know. It's, it's kind of a, everybody's dealing with it differently. I mean, it's an emotional time. So um, I personally, you know, thank you guys for at least recognizing the day. I mean, it might not mean anything to some people in town, but it means a lot to us. Um, some related to that. Um, I know I've come up here a couple times now asking for this, that, and everything, but um, tonight I was just going to present to you something um, I've been thinking about, you know, trying to figure out how to ask for or, or how to present it. So I figured since Southbridge is good with arts, we get a lot of artists, sculptors out there. Um, we've got some smart people here. I've been looking at other towns, you know, Joplin, Tuscaloosa, uh, Yazoo City down in Mississippi, when they've been affected by big storms like this, and you know, we had some loss of life, unfortunately, here in Massachusetts. Um, they've always done some sort of a memorial, kind of like a, I guess you call it like a thinking garden, some, something, I don't quite know how to put it all together, so I was kind of calling it out tonight, not just to you guys, but anybody at home. Um, I'm, I'm looking at, you know, I know I kind of missed hitting the one year mark, but maybe for something in the near future. I was thinking like a central location, which would be the airport probably, it's a, it's a town property, you know, because, I mean, we've got Pleasant Street on one side, we've got Brookside Road, Charlton Street, 169, all on the other side, so the airport was kind of in the middle. They got hit as well. Um, I was thinking possibly, you know, they got the um, historical markers here in town. We've got one on Brookside for an old cutlery we used to have years ago. I was thinking, I know Pleasant Street got hit about 5.17 p.m. We got hit about 5.18 p.m. Um, possibly some kind of you know, if we could talk to the state, maybe grant something, just, just a marker. I mean, it's part of history. You, maybe with a time, a little brief thing of which direction it came. You know, if, if somebody ever, we, we see people all the time on our street driving real slow. We, we've seen New Jersey license plates. We've seen New Hampshire people come by and look, and it's almost like, what do I, do I go out and talk to these people? Say, oh, yeah, this is where it came from. Oh, you know, it's, if, if it was a marker, maybe they could take a look at. And then I was thinking maybe in the middle, like a small park bench. A little mulch area, and of course, trees are real significant during this tornado. Maybe we could plant a small tree just to start with, so we could all, you know, kind of. When we have days where we just get frustrated, we could go up there. It's a nice, quiet area. You can see for quite a while. You can sit, look at the names of the 
the people that did perish and realize that we are lucky. And, you know, just, just an idea, just to put it out there. And, and like I said, we got sculptors here in town. Somebody could come up with a great, you know, I was thinking maybe either out of a big chunk of wood, carve a, some sort of a tornado with the, the names on it, or a metal sculptor, a big metal spiral, I don't know. <laughs> Creativity, that's not my thing. But um, um, my, other, my, other, my other question tonight, totally unrelated, but I just got to ask. Um, I wasn't here last week when you guys were talking about chickens. I told you it was unrelated. But um, <laughs> if somebody already had chickens and a rooster before this, I mean, is it, is it grandfathered in? I mean, do, we, do you have to just grab your rooster and toss them now that they're illegal, or do I have to bring them down to town hall in a box, or what, I mean, what, <laughs> how does this work? Uh, that's a good question. I, I don't know. Um, okay, because I know there's a few families in town that do have That already have roosters. chickens. I guess that would be a question to um, probably take up with, was it the Board of, it's the Board of it's Health? Actually, yeah, the, the planning board is in the process of reviewing the regulations, so that's something that probably should be addressed to them to see if there's some way they want to address the issue of okay. um, pre-existing conditions. Of course, I had to come up with that question, right? <laughs> so, well, I appreciate it. I just wanted to bring that idea up. Maybe, if, um, you know, you. I could check back with the town hall eventually. If there's anybody who wants to inquire about mm -hmm. it, maybe we can work together. Sure. Just come up with something the next year that, you know, we can at least remember it by. So. You may want to take some time at, if you, if you're coming plan on coming to this dinner. You may yes. want to take some time at that at that point too to definitely I, talk I'll, to some people and see if you can come up with some ideas for that. That'd be we great. I'll be there. Thank you. Thank you for your ideas. Thank you thoughts. very much. Thank you. Anybody else wish to come forward? Good evening, Town Council, Madam Chair. My name is Stephanie DiMartino. I reside at 92 Harrington Street. Back in March, I received a ticket in the mail from the uh, trash bylaw that was implemented. And I wasn't sure why I was receiving the ticket. So the first thing I did was I called the uh, business line at the police station. And the officer on duty was very nice and understanding. However, he couldn't help me. So he guided me into um, calling <clears throat> over to the town hall or my counselors. So I went online and looked up the town of Southbridge and got the listing for the counselors. And the first call I made was to Madam Chairwoman Counselor Nicola. Left her a message and explained the situation as to why I felt I re didn't receive this ticket, um, why I received it, but felt w why I shouldn't have received it. And she called me back, and she was very understanding on the phone and took the time to listen to me. However, she could not help me, so she directed me in the right direction, which was to go to town hall, which I did the next day. And they said they were waiting for me. I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, maybe I look like I'm mad all the time, I'm not sure. But anyway, they directed me to Jim Morin's office, where I explained my case to Mr. Morin, and I explained that I didn't feel that I should have received this ticket, that it may have been an error. And he explained the process to me, and said he would have to speak with the officer on duty that day and get back to me. So I waited, and he did get back to me. And it was discovered that the ticket was given an error. It was an address close to mine. So I just wanted to come here tonight and explain my situation and the steps that I took in order to rectify it. And I think this is a good bylaw to have because I lived in Worcester from 1997 to 2002. And in Worcester, we had to use yellow trash bags. If you didn't use the yellow trash bags, your trash didn't get picked up. That's how it was, and that's what we did, and I never had a problem with it. And now with this new trash bylaw in place, I'm noticing as I drive down Charlton Street, the trash barrels are out and the covers are on, and I don't see the trash piling up. I don't see the furniture anymore as much as I used to see it before the trash bylaw was put in place. So I think it's a very good idea. I'd also like to thank Chairwoman Nicola for taking the time to return my call. She didn't have to, but she did. And that's what these counselors are here for. They're here for us and they're right on the website. It didn't take any time for me to Google and find the town of Southbridge in the website. So I think if I can do it, everybody can do it, if you have a computer. If not, you can 
maybe go to the library or borrow from a friend or even call information, but it, it took me a few minutes to find out where I needed to go. So I just wanted to come here tonight and explain the steps that I took and to thank you very much for your time, Madam Chair. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wishes to come forward? Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, Madam Vice Chair, members of the Town Council. My name is Lauren McLaughlin. I live at 71 Park Avenue in Southbridge. I'm here today because, in a sense, I was directed by the school committee to address you regarding a concern that I had explained to them a couple of weeks ago at their last meeting. Um, I'm a member of the Wells Middle School Council, and at a meeting earlier in the month, we were advised by Amy Allen, uh, Principal Allen, that there was a proposal on the board to eliminate a school nurse's position to consolidate the two nursing positions that are currently at the middle school and the high school to consolidate them and have one nurse up at the new junior senior high school. Um, that was very concerning to me as a parent. Um, I know at that meeting Amy, uh, Principal Allen had uh, said that on average, she thought that Ms. Can Mrs. Cantara saw about 53 children a day on average in her office. Ironically, uh, my daughter had to go to the school, school nurse today, and um, Mrs. Cantara called me at 10.45, and so I said, Mrs. Cantara, can I ask you a question? Because I relayed to her what um, Principal Allen had told me. And I said to her, how many children do you see in a day? Uh, Principal Allen told me it was 53, and she said, as of right now, I've seen 55 children in my office today. That was at 10.45 this morning. Um, I'm very concerned about consolidating the school nursing position up at the new junior senior high school. First of all, there are gonna be 1,000 to 1,100 students up there. With the addition of faculty, there may be between 1,200, 1,250 people up there. The campus is very spread out. Um, and the nurse's office would either be located on the high school side or the middle school side. And it was my understanding as a parent that when this building was built that the two sides would be separate and that the children would have, the students would have very little interaction with each other from the middle school or the high school. Certainly if there's one school nurse, you can have a sixth grader going to uh, the nurse's office and interacting obviously with juniors and seniors in high school. Um, in addition to that, uh, and the potential caseload for a nurse um, up at the school for one nurse. Uh, the nurses are required to do mandated screenings, which include vision, hearing, postural screenings, and BMI screenings. How one person could possibly manage to accomplish all of that is amazing. Uh, the National School Nurse Association recommends in a general population, one nurse for every 750 people in a general population. However, in a student population that requires professional nursing services or intervention, has a high special needs population or a population with high poverty, they actually recommend one nurse for every 250 students. Um, and one nurse for every 125 students if in districts where there are complex medical needs. There are currently bills pending in the United States House and Senate related to those ratios. And it's my firm belief that if students are not well, they cannot learn. Um, if they're not well, they're not in school. They're missing out on their classes and their instruction. Um, and I'm here tonight uh, just to advocate for that. I, when I mentioned my concern to the school committee, uh, I was told that they had had a budget meeting already and that it's now been turned over to you and that I should come here to address this with you. So I'm here. Um, just to let you know, because I know, and parents weren't notified about that meeting. I know, I guess there was a posting in the newspaper, but parents didn't know, and I certainly didn't know when I heard about a budget meeting that it was a discussion of this type that was taking place. So I appreciate your time. Thank you. Um, would you like to address this, Mr. Clark? Just, just to uh, be clear, uh, most town departments, the council has a, a direct say in terms of some of those operational levels and the appropriations. Mm -hmm with all the exception of one, and that is the school department. Uh, the school department was actually allocated, a, granted it's not what they wanted, mm -hmm. so I'll, I'll give them that up front, but we did give them an allocation of over two and a half percent increase from fairly restricted funds that we had available to us. 
how a school department spends their funds is really the purview of the, the school committee. So how they choose to allocate those funds is, is really up to them. So, and I don't want to play back and forth with them. That's why I'm kind of saying that, you know, the most we could do is give them additional money if we had it, which we don't, but then they can spend it however they want. So the allocation of how those funds get spent is, is the purview of the, the school committee. I understood that to be the case, but as I said, I was directed here tonight. Thank you very much. For what it's worth, Ms. McLaughlin, I agree with you. And I would be in support of that, that there are at least two school nurses, one for the high school level and one for the middle school. But unfortunately, as the manager said, we don't set policy for the school. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to come forward? Uh, John Pulaski, Old Woodstock Road. Uh, three small things. Well, they're not small. Uh, we uh, have a sign on Woodstock Road right now temporary sign uh, related to the detour. The first three words, uh, stay straight stupid. Stay straight stupid. Letters this big. I, I don't think that's the way that uh, anybody should be addressed. Perhaps it is uh, written in the spirit of some of the demeanor during the uh, Counselors Forum last week, but stay straight stupid is no way to direct citizens, drivers. I, I couldn't believe my eyes. Another thing unrelated, I respectfully request that you fund uh, Ms. Doust's uh, office with sufficient funds to allow people to vote at the five precincts instead of having them all go up to the community center. A lot of us think when we do our planning on how it is for us, and many of us that are involved in town government have automobiles, but we have people in town that they can afford to have automobiles, but due to bad eyesight, for example, they can't uh, drive, or there are people that due to uh, financial limitations, uh, they're, uh, they don't have a car. And uh, like, for example, there used to be uh, people could vote at Charlton Street School down on the flat. Uh, a lot of people down there don't have cars. Uh, there's various reasons. Some people don't vote just because they don't care. They don't think it matters. But I think every effort, it, it just can't be too, democracy isn't too expensive. The alternative is bad government. So I respectfully request that uh, the town clerk's office be given sufficient funds to allow the five precincts to be open so people can vote so people can walk to the polls, so they don't have to call a cab. And uh, a third thing, uh, perhaps I should bring it up at a subcommittee. I did bring this up at a subcommittee uh, the other day. But we have a, uh, we're supposed to have some site conditions related to the landfill. And uh, very disappointed in state government. I just kind of saw a small example of this. Got the school committee telling a nice woman who's very concerned about education to come to the, this branch. And this branch is, you know, explaining we get the same merry-go-round of sorts that occurs between state government, federal government, and uh, town government, where, and it's very easy to do, to point at one of the other three branches. So we've got site assignments that, uh, for example, the uh, woman that's hired to be our recycling coordinator is supposed to be recycling coordinator for the towns that bring their trash here. We are going to be bringing 4% of the trash to the landfill. Other towns are going to bring 96%. She's supposed to be there, according to the site assignment, for the 96%. And the last I've checked, that's not happening. It was said that Casella is taking care of it. Now, in this town where Casella is supposed to be taking care of things, we're hiring an outsider. Now, the site assignment isn't being taken. I call the state, and the state says the town's supposed to be doing something about it. I have been talking to the federal government. It's hard to get the federal government to be interested in something that's happening in the town, but they are interested, and there is legislation being coined to help us with not what's going into the landfill, but what's unfortunately coming out of the landfill and going into the groundwater. Now, what was done by the town of Southbridge? When someone tried to do something about the water, 
the, bad, the groundwater contamination, she was fired. I don't know if it was, it was don't, I'm not saying it was related, but uh, I, I really, you know, it's not a joke. It's, it's, it probably costs $6 million to clear that up now. It's going to cost $35 million to clear it up in uh, 10 or 12 years. And it's just, it's, it's not smart government. We ought to clean it up. We ought to at least look into cleaning it up instead of ignoring it. So, okay, I said my piece. I probably spent my five minutes. But please, give, give people a chance that don't have a car to vote this uh, June. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Okay. Just on, on the first one, that, that is not a town project, so we will check and see who did, that, who did the signs for those projects. But um, certainly it would not be town policy to, to insult the residents of this community. It is a uh, project that was being done by National Grid on the gra gas side. But we will look into that, and if that sign is out there, then we will ask to have it removed, because that, that is insulting. Okay, thank you. Are there any, anybody else wish to come forward? Good evening. My name is Erin Quinney, and I live at 8 Crescent Street in Southbridge. And also at May 8th school committee meeting, um, I asked the school committee when I could expect to hear a response regarding a complaint which I submitted to them at the conclusion of my address to them on April 24th. At that time, I was instructed by school committee chairman Jovian that it is the responsibility of the voters in the town of Southbridge to enforce the Southbridge school committee member policies regarding school committee members themselves. In an effort to address the voters in this community, I submitted a letter to the editor to the news and would like to share that letter with the town council and the viewing members of the community um, as voters in the town. It is my belief that school committee member Lazo committed several violations of the school committee member ethics and school committee member duties as written in the school, Southbridge School Committee policy manual in sections BB, AA, and BCA. I requested that the school committee look into these violations and that appropriate disciplinary action be taken. Again, as Mr. Jovian instructed me, that the voters would be the body to hold Mr. Lazo accountable for his behavior, I have outlined below the statements Mr. Lazo made and referenced the duties and ethics violations that I believe were committed. During new business at the April 10th meeting, Mr. Lazo brought up concerns regarding the elimination of the express line at the high school. I quote, I as a school commem school committee member want to show my discontents toward that move, I think it's incorrect, end quote. Bringing up his concerns regarding the elimination of the line at the school committee in his role as a school committee member violates Southbridge School Committee member ethic number two, that is to recognize and support the administrative chain of command and refuse to act on complaints as an individual outside the administration, number four, which is refer all complaints to the administrative staff for solution and only discuss them at meetings if such solutions fail. And duty number five, to refer questions and complaints to the proper school authorities. He continued, I quote again, I'm sad that the food service director or the state person or the federal person who, or whoever came in to change this didn't come in front of the school committee or the board that is supposedly in charge of the school system to actually air this out before putting anything forward. This violates Southbridge School Committee member ethic number four, which is give the chief administrator full responsibility for discharging her professional duties and hold her responsible for acceptable results. Mr. Laza requested that the school committee, quote, go behind the federal and state guidelines violating school, Southbridge School Committee member ethic number four in relation to the community, which is to be well informed concerning the duties of a committee member on both a local and state level. And duty one, to become familiar with general laws of the Commonwealth relating to education and the school committee operations regulate and the regulations of the Mass Board of Education. Mr. Lazo should have addressed his concerns to Sue Pinkham as food service director, who is exercising her professional obligation in complying with state and federal lunch guidelines. Mr. Lazo himself stated on April 24th that he had spoken to Sue the day before, 13 days after he shared his concerns at the school committee meeting. While expressing his, quote, discontents about all students going through one single line at the high school, he also made the following comments. Again, I quote, taking away from the ones who do pay because of the ones that don't pay. Quoting again, it is always about the 70% free lunch, not about the 30%. It's unbelievable how discrimination runs one way. That's probably the part that bothers me the most. 
when they leave school and can only afford a $10 pair of jeans and not a $40 pair of jeans, is the state going to step up and buy that for them too? That's the problem with society. We always cater to the bottom end. And he went on to state that he is a Democrat. These comments I found, I found most egregious, and they are clear violations of the Southbridge School Committee member ethics number five, to remember that he represents the entire community at all times, and number six, accept the office as a committee member as a means of unselfish service with no intent to, quote, play politics in any sense of the word. Each violation of the member ethics is a violation of duty six, as it is to comply with the accepted code of ethics for school committee members. Mr. Lazo has, at the past two school committee meetings, tried to re reframe his express line comments since my request that he be held accountable, stating he was simply, quote, relaying a message from the people who had called me. I got barraged with phone calls. Concerned parents, um, end quote. Uh, not once during this discussion on April 10th did he reference a single parent other than himself. Quote again, I believe we represent 100%. It's not like I make statements and don't do my homework. I went and had lunch yesterday, end quote. Um, again, that's 13 days after he made his statements. Begin quote again, to observe what parents were talking about. When a parent calls a school committee member, I'm supposed to represent. In his reframing, it is clear that he is also trying to rewrite history. In the midst of the express line conversation, while addressing Mr. Wigan, Mr. Lazo clearly laid out that the precipitance of his bringing this issue to the school committee was not a barrage of parents calling him with concerns regarding the quality of their children's lunch. In fact, it was a conversation he had with his daughter. I quote, I noticed you mentioned the chef's name. That's not where I heard this from. My daughter came home and was discussing it like all students tell their parents. We are now going to start bringing our own lunches instead of buying from the school. End quote. He then went on to say, we'll deal with it when the time comes. The parents will let us know, I'm sure. End quote. Indicating that parents hadn't voiced their concerns at that time, but he felt with some certainty that that may happen in the future. I am proud to be a resident of Southbridge. I love the community in which I live. I am proud to say that my son is a student in the Southbridge Public Schools. I believe Southbridge is a great place to live and to raise a family. I also believe that it is an honor and a privilege that we as voters in this town have granted our elected officials to represent us. As an elected member of the Southbridge School Committee, Mr. Lazo stated he was, quote, representing the, the citizens of Southbridge when he made the above comments. I know that South such outrageous behavior does not well represent me nor do I believe it reflects well in this community. I believe Southbridge deserves better, and we, as voters, need to hold school committee members accountable for the way they, quote, represent us, our children, and our community. And as ludicrous as it may sound, according to school committee member Jovian, we, as voters, also need to hold them accountable to enforce the policies they wrote, compiled, and voted into their policy manual. Thank you. You're welcome. Madam Chair. Yes, Counselor. Thank you. Just a point of information. Uh, anything that uh, begins an elected official, ethics-wise, complaint, the proper procedures to go through the Ethics Commission. A, as far as elected officials, no elected official uh, other than things, you can't hear me? Uh, I, don't, I don't know what's wrong with the sound system. If my, I know what my father would say, my late father would say if he was yeah. here. As I was saying, elected officials are held accountable in two ways. If it's an ethics violation, it's through the Ethics Commission. If it's because somebody's not pleased with the way they are performing their duties as an elected official, it is for them to not vote for them. And if the majority vote, that's exactly what we as town council members or members of the school committee are. We cannot, we have great latitude to express the opinions and viewpoints that we have as elected officials and those that of our constituents. So. While I understand and appreciate the citizens' concerns and comments, there's really nothing that we can do as a council, and the, those are the two avenues that are present. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor, but I think that, that um, Ms. Quinney was just using this forum to read her letter. I don't think she expects the council yes. to be able to help her. I do not expect the council to help me, other than I would like to address you as voters. And as far as um, the Ethics Commission, the Ethics Commission only investigates matters that are uh, conflict of interest. And I have stated very clearly at the school committee meeting that I do not believe that a law, an ethics law was violated. However, they have written policies to which they should hold themselves accountable to. And if 
I followed the chain that I'm supposed to follow. I addressed the committee. I put my complaint in writing, and I asked that steps be taken, which I articulated. And then at the last meeting, I just asked when I could expect to hear back, and was then told that to whom I should address my concerns was what I asked, and was told that the voters of Southbridge are the people to whom you should express your concerns. Therefore, as I'm assuming you are all voters, as are many of the people viewing on television, I wanted to further address my concerns to you all as voters. Then, Madam Chair, I would make a point of order that this is the inappropriate forum for that because it's making a political statement. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Quinney. Okay, do we have any other citizens who wish to come forward this evening? I'm moving ahead. Agenda item number nine, vote to confirm the appointment of Richard T. Nash of Southbridge to the Board of Registrars to fill the vacancy of James Dyer expiring June 30th, 2012, and to appoint Mr. Nash for an additional three-year term to expire June 30th, 2015. Well Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 10, vote to adopt the FY 2013 Town of Southbridge General Fund operating budget per the attached voting document in the amount of $44,985,071 to be funded as follows. Raise and appropriate $41,364,322. Transfer from other available funds. Sale of street list books, $500. Cable operating account, $109,567. Septic loan program, $6,048. Debt service reserve, $607,000. Perpetual care interest, $3,000. Polling hours, $2,760. Armory debt service reserve, $59,584. Access road debt service, $252,290. Library incentive grant, $20,000. Landfill reimbursement fund, $72,000. Subtotal of transfers from other available funds, $1,132,749. Other transfers, Landfill Reimbursement Fund, $558,000. Landfill Royalty Fund, $1,100,000. Free cash, $830,000. Subtotal of other transfers, $2,488,000. Total general fund budget, $44,985,071. So moved. Second. Mr. Chairman, I mean, Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. Clark. Tied. I'm tired. Madam Sorry. Chair, just uh, I'd like to offer the process, if we could, for how we've done it in the time that I've been here. Certainly, it's open to, to the council. Uh, mm -hmm. First off, what I've done in the past is just on the adoption of the budget, just to quickly read because it is fairly short. Uh, the town council shall adopt the budget with or without amendment on or before the end of the 11th month of the fiscal year currently ending. So that would be May. In amending the budget, is it may, by majority vote of the full council, i.e., a minimum of five votes, delete or decrease any program or amount except expenditures required by law or for debt service. It is by two-thirds vote of the full council, i.e., a minimum of six votes, to increase any amount in or of the total of the proposed budget. Adoption of the budget shall constitute an appropriation of the amount specified therein as expenditures from the funds indicated. Uh, what we've done in the time that I've been here is to read through the, uh, the voting document, which is really a summary of all the budgets, and I will group them and to read down the list of the 
the budget appropriation vote. And then if there's any holds, uh, read slowly. If there's any holds, then we would address the issues related to the holds. If not, then we can go through and, and vote the entirety of the budget at the conclusion of the resolution of those. That's fine. We'll if do that, that sounds way. fine, yeah. <clears throat> then I shall uh, commence. And I do have uh, staff here with me to uh, go through. The first one that I have for the uh, appropriation vote is Town Council 16,554. On the town manager, 243,848. On town accountant, 145,133. On the assessors, now if you would look, because I'm looking down at the numbers, so if there's someone that says I'm taking, I'm, that's my <laughs> job. I just realized I can't see <laughs> if I'm doing this. On the assessors, 178,716. Town Treasurer Collector, 315022. The Town Attorney, 123,000. The town, the town Clerk, 156,281. Elections and Registration, 61,275. The Planning Board, 3,006. Economic Development, 80,037. Cable Advisory, 109567. Under, under the general government programs, I'm just, well, I'm just gonna read the bottom line, the subtotal of administration. It's 747,400. Data processing, 193,383. Council Reserve, 100,000. Contributory retirement, 2,485,492. Under personnel, the personnel subtotal, 135,071. Group health and life, 2,807,500. Under general insurance, subtotal general insurance category, 658, 658,000. <coughs> Under boards, committees, and commissions, the subtotal of that is 6,878. On debt service, principal on debt, $1,759,095. Interest on long-term debt, 608,046. Interest on short-term debt, 322,061. Issuance expense, 28845 The subtotal of debt service, 2718047 Under uh, special accounts, the uh, subtotal on that is 182250 For police, 3,1290. Fire and ambulance, 2,076,767. Under inspections, 148,010. Under street lights, 191,000. Under DPW operations and administration, 1,625,497. DPW snow and ice, 200. $1,200. Under the health department, 720861 Under veterans and community center, 96658 Under the library, 485812 Under recreation, 18404 under Veterans Benefits, 80,000. Under Veterans Memorials, 2,700. Southbridge Public Schools, 23,754,366. Under Bay Path, 1,117,046. Under 
and actually the sewer and the water will do at that at that stage of the budget. So Madam Chair, according to the holds, the only one I had was under the town manager budget. Yes. Councillor McDonald. <coughs> yes, uh, to what extent does that all cover as far as per in terms of personnel salaries and everything? Is just the current staff? And is there any a lot in there that's a, a scheduled increase as far as changing duties in the office? Currently, the budget has um, basically three positions in it. It has myself, uh, full-time with a 1% increase, effective August 18th, concurrent with my contract. Um, it has um, the secretarial position, uh, the office assistant at full-time, and that has the 1% built in. I have two part-timers that, for the most part, come to one full-time position. So that half-time position, right now, it's a little bit more than half-time, but to combine, they're, they're about 40 hours, a little bit over the 37 and a half. We have one person that's been there uh, quite a bit, long time. Uh, the title is the um, office clerk, Confident. uh, confidential clerk. Couldn't think of confidential clerk. And then we will be hiring a second part-time confidential clerk. Uh, that position was vacated by a person that held the position that moved on to a different uh, organization. The hours in that have been increased modestly because we are going to have HR duties included in that. Depending upon the person we hire, it may only be an addition of about two or three hours additional a week. And then we do have, I believe, a, um, a small amount in there. I believe it's 1000 or $2,000 for intern, $2,000 for intern. But those are the only staffing uh, elements related to the manager's office, and that is consistent with what we've had in the past. And Madam Chair, just follow up just to clarify, in the change to the clerk, the change in classification, including the human resources duties, which were not previously in there, is that going to be scaled out at a higher salary rate? No, it, it, will be in, it will be in the same classification, just the hours have increased. In terms of the duties, the duties have always been included in there. What we're doing is emphasizing that we want someone with an HR background because we probably will restructure the office a little bit to give that person more HR duties. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else have anything on this, this hold? No? Okay. Are, are, you gonna, are you ready to vote, Madam Chair? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Are you ready to vote? Is that what we're going to do yes, now? I just had one more point I wanted to make, okay. if I could. Um, there have been some duties that have been reclassified. I know the uh, human resources one isn't one of them, uh, and I'm fine with that. I think we've been all along needing to exercise some austerity measures. I plan on voting no on this budget, not because I disagree with it in whole. I, I disagree with parts of it, and specifically, uh, there's things that should have been brought to this council that I believe uh, were not, and uh, to cite that I reference Chapter 4 of the Charter 4-2-3, Paragraph K, which says the cha town manager shall pro propose and the town council may adopt personnel rules providing for the job descriptions for all town positions based on the duties, responsibilities, and authority of each position with adequate provision for reclassification of any position whenever warranted by changed circumstances and by such other practices and procedures may be deemed necessary for the administration of the town personnel system. So I, rather than go through and hold up the process, because I know this is going to pass, I just wanted to explain why I'm voting no. I don't believe that we've done our due diligence as the council, not necessarily the manager. He's done his responsibility. I think we could have gone a step further. And so on that, I'm not going to be in support of this budget tonight. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Did we have a motion on this? Mm -hmm. yes. okay. There's a motion in a second. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Councilor McDonald? No. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? No. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Six yes, two no. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Agenda item 11, vote to transfer the sum of $220,000 from the stabilization fund to reduce the FY 2013 tax rate. And there's a two-third roll call vote required on this. Second. Any discussion? Councillor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, in terms of, uh, this is a good move, I think, uh, but I did want to ask that through you to the town manager, 
in the overall effect of the budget, what does that budget as voted and passed now have on the, the, the tax rate effect? I mean, we're going to vote on this now, but given this and the previous vote, what is that in terms of December when we vote the tax rate, should we expect the citizens to get for a tax rate? Geez, you know, I should know that off the top of my head. I, it's not coming to me. I think we did have in the uh, budget message, I believe that for uh, the, the fiscal years, uh, actually, I have the. Do, do you have that off the top of your head, Mo? I do. Uh, before I answer that, I have to tell you now. This, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Um, could you turn the mic up? Thank you. Okay. Um, the effect on the tax rate, it's impossible to know what the tax rate will be. We are in the middle of the revaluation program, and all of our values are going to be changed. So even if we raise the identical amount next year that we're raising in taxes this year, the tax rate will change because the valuations will change. So it's not the tax rate that I can't answer that question because it's impossible to know. What I think we can tell you, though, is um, the manager's budget is uh, based on increasing the tax levy to the maximum allowable tax levy in the levy limit, which is allowed under Prop 2.5. And to do that, um, you're allowed to raise your levy limit by your new growth and by 2.5% from the prior year. To do that, um, including the new growth, it, it would mean the tax levy would increase about 4.2%. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. All set? Yes. Okay. Anybody else? Councilor Regis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, what is our current balance in the stabilization fund? Before. The current balance is 2.4 million, and that is before the calculation for the 220,000 and a subsequent um, agenda item that's on here for the snow and ice for the 85,000. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, through you to the town manager, if I could. Um, in reviewing um, what's going on with the discussions at the state level on the budgets, um, I know that this budget is predicated on uh, House 2, the governor's budget numbers. Right. Uh, which I think most of us did use because they're the most conservative when uh, putting our budgets together. Um, in looking at the, the House final budget and then the Senate's budget also that um, came out last week, um, it looks like we could stand to gain uh, somewhere of $225,000. Um, I am not one who is in favor of using reserves um, to balance an operating budget. So I would just ask that um, if the uh, additional funding comes time when the state mm -hmm. decides what they're going to do, which will probably be June 30th, um, and to see what we get, what, what, how it shakes out. If we do get these additional funds, I would ask that the administration seriously look at um, coming back to this council and asking us to reappropriate the money back into the stabilization fund and just utilize those extra, uh, that extra money um, to balance the budget rather than using the stabilization fund. Thank you. And we will give uh, serious consideration to that. And as you've already stated, I mean, until they actually get everything settled, we won't know where we are, but it, hopefully it'll be good news and we'll have more instead of less. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody else have anything on this? Remember, this is a two-thirds roll call vote is required on this to pass. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Twelve, vote that the, the amount of two million eight hundred and twenty. <coughs> $2,820,738 is appropriated for the FY 2013 Sewer Enterprise Fund budget 
to be raised from sewer usage, user, sewer, <laughs> sewer user charges and other departmental revenues. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Councillor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through, uh, through you to the manager, to what effect does this uh, have on the rates? The uh, rate is going to be a 2% increase on the sewer rate. Thank you, Madam Chair. Is that it? Okay. Anybody else? Roll call, please. Councillor Regis? Yes. Councillor Spinelli? Yes. Councillor Vandal? No. Councillor Clements? Yes. Councillor Langevin? Yes. Councillor Micucci? Yes. Councillor McDonald? No. Councillor Nicola? Yes. Six yes, two no. Agenda item number 13, vote that the amount of $3,126,898 is appropriated for the FY213 Water Enterprise Fund budget to be raised from water user charges and other departmental revenues. So moved. Second. Any discussion on that? Councillor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, through you to the manager, same question. To what extent does this affect the water rates for the users? This one is zero. Thank you, Madam Chair. Anybody else? Roll call, please. Councillor Spinelli? Yes. Councillor Vandal? No. Councillor Clements? Yes. Councillor Langevin? Yes. Councillor Marcucci? Yes. Councillor McDonald? No. Councillor Nicola? Yes. Councillor Regis? Yes. Six yes, two no. Thank you. 14. Vote to reauthorize the, quote, leased properties revolving fund, uh, end quote, under the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 44, Section 53E and a half, to pay repairs, improvements, expenses, and utilities for all town-owned leased property except 115 Marcy Street from lease payments to be deposited in the account with all expenditures to be approved by the town manager and total expenditures from the account not to exceed $100,000 per year. So moved. Second. Discussion. Roll call, please. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Micucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Fifteen, vote to reauthorize re the, quote, daycare center leased properties revolving fund, end quote, under the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 44, Section 53E and a half to pay repairs, improvements, expenses, and utilities for the leased property at 115 Marcy Street from lease payments to be deposited in the account with all expenditures to be approved by the town manager and total expenditures from the account not to exceed $100,000 per year. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councillor Clements? Yes. Councillor Langevin? Yes. Councillor Marcucci? Yes. Councillor McDonald? Yes. Councillor Nicola? Yes. Councillor Regis? Yes. Councillor Spinelli? Yes. Councillor Vandal? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Sixteen. Vote to reauthorize the, quote, Southbridge Airport Leased Properties Revolving Fund, end quote, under the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53E and, 53 and a half, to pay repairs, improvements, expenses, and utilities for the leased property at the Southbridge Municipal Airport from lease payments to be deposited in the account with all expenditures to be approved by the town manager and total expenditures from the account not to exceed $100,000 per year. So moved. Second. Any discussion? A roll call, please. Councillor Langevin? Yes. Councillor Marcucci? Yes. Councillor McDonald? Yes. Councillor Nicola? Yes. Councillor Regis? Yes. Councillor Spinelli? Yes. Councillor Vandal? Yes. Councillor Clements? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Seventeen. Vote to reauthorize the, quote, municipal hearing officer revolving fund, end quote, under the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53E and a half, to pay expenses associated with the administration and collection of fines in violation of, of Mass General Law, Chapter 148A and Chapter 115 of the Acts of 2009. Such fines to be deposited into the account 
with all expenditures to be approved by the town manager and total expenditures from the account not to exceed $10,000 per year. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Councillor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, through you to the town manager, too. I just want a clarification because I know this is for the uh, um, sp the sprinklers and the smoke detector stuff, but ha to what extent does the hearing officer in this account play into with the trash fines or any actually, at all? Under the trash fines, in order to enforce that, that actually falls under the Chapter 115 of the Acts of 2009. The other just uh, item of note on this is that I did go to the municipal hearing officer training and the statute is very, very clear that we are supposed to be taking a portion of those fines and paying for the municipal hearing officer. So that's why we have increased this, I think, from other years. We have increased it up, uh, but we are supposed to be using that, and we have not always been as diligent as perhaps we should. Most of that money went back to um, the, the general fund. So we have corrected that in this vote by having that go towards, the 10,000 would go towards uh, paying the municipal hearing officer, which is required by statute under the 148A at 20, a minimum of 2,500. Uh, 2, okay. Follow up to that, Madam Chair, thank you. So uh, was the hearings officer then being paid an additional salary or stipend for doing those duties up to this point? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Welcome. Anybody else? Yeah. Councilor Vandal. Um, does this mean that the municipal hearing officer that we have is going to be getting an increase in salary, seeing that she's uh, doing above and beyond what it originally called for? When you do the municipal hearing officer statute, you're required by law to pay a minimum of 2500 And in the entire time that I've been here, uh, we have been paying that 2500 for the personnel that do it. For what? For the personnel that act as the municipal hearing officer, we've been paying the $2,500. So we pay that one amount, whether they get one fine or whether they get a a one appeal or whether they get a, a hundred appeals. And it won't go up? Unless you want to have an increase, I've been no, keeping, no, it, at want, the, I've been keeping it at a minimum. I don't want an increase. <laughs> okay. That's why I voted no on most of the items that I voted no on. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. Anybody else? Okay. Roll call, please. Councilor Micucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. <coughs> okay. 18. Vote to amend Schedule 1 to approve a 1% increase as proposed May 21st, 2012 to be effective July 1st, 2012. So moved. Second. Any discussion? A roll call, please. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Micucci? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 19, and before I, I get into that, you should all have received um, a handout from the manager. On Schedule 5, there was something missing on the fire department at the bottom. On the original paperwork we had, it had been, it wasn't there. Um, the amount was, the amount was there, 2650 per hour, but what that's for is the EMT rate for transfers. So that's been added in there. Otherwise, it is what it is. And agenda item number 19 is vote to amend Schedule 5 as proposed May 21st, 2012 to be effective July 1st, 2012. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay, roll call, please. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Eight yes. Thank you. Agenda item number 20, vote to appropriate $8,226 from free cash to the following accounts and to further approve a contract increase to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts grant relative to the Grand Trunk Trail Connector Project, project number 88, project number 8316, 
Grand Trunk Trail Connector Grant, $6,636.86. Fund number 840, Stabilization Fund, $1,589.14. So moved. Second. Any discussion on this? Mr. 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 Clark, okay. go ahead. Uh, what we have is we've utilized the majority of free cash. There's $8,226 that's left in there, and we just wish to allocate that funding. Uh, so the stabilization fund is fairly straightforward. On the Grand Trunk Trail, uh, we did have an issue, which I, I laid out in a memo to the council that I approved a contract uh, inadvertently above and beyond. It was uh, $11,636.86 over. Uh, we were able to get an uh, additional grant from the Trails Committee, which I appreciate for their efforts. And this would allow for uh, the balance of that work to be paid for, the, the $6,636.86, uh, with the idea that I have talked to the folks at the state. They are very, very understanding. And we will also sign under this a contract amendment. And if they have available funds, which I do believe they will have some available funds, perhaps some or, or hopefully all, but at this point some, to cover this. So this is to fund a contract and then secondly to allow for the revised grant to be submitted. They won't know that they have uh, available funds until December. Thank you. Thank you. Anything, Councilor Regis? Thank you, Madam Chair. I would just ask that um, when this all gets straightened out that the contractor get paid <coughs> <laughs> well, that's the idea behind this, is that we can pay him and then not have that person wait for till I mean, December. He did the project in good faith. This is a local business owner. I think we're all aware of the name. And uh, uh, Mr. Regis, is it? Is it, it that the name? Yeah, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> oh, my God, don't Kidding. say that. Here comes Kidding. the Ethics Commission. No. <laughs> um, uh, and and uh, the gentleman, you know, works with the town on many occasions and uh, provides us with assistance in other areas. And I just want to make sure we pay him as soon as we are able to. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Anybody else wish to? Anything on this? Roll call, please. Councillor Regis? Yes. Councillor Spinelli? Yes. Councillor Vandal? Yes. Councillor Clements? Yes. Councillor Langevin? Yes. Councillor Micucci? Yes. Councillor McDonald? Yes. Councillor Nicola? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 21. Vote to transfer $85,000 from the Stabilization Fund to Snow and Ice General Fund accounts <coughs> to fund the final FY 2012 Snow and Ice expenditures. And this requires a two-third roll call vote. So, so moved. Second. Any discussion there? Councilor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, through you to the town manager. Why are we, I have two, two questions. What mm -hmm. has been the total spent for the snow and ice account for the fiscal year 2012, seeing as we've had one of the most mild winters in recollection, and then why are we transferring another 85,000? Yeah, no, good questions on both. I believe it's uh, 285,000. We had budgeted 200 and we're 85,000 over. Uh, what we had done at a uh, previous council meeting is the council had authorized to do a authorization to overexpend the snow and ice account. And we had a little bit of this discussion in, in terms of um, the snow and ice. What we actually, in this, I believe that we were about uh, 25,000 uh, in additional costs over the 200,000, and the additional money, the, the 60, the 60 odd thousand, is that we had minimum purchases that were required under our salt and sand, not sand, but under our chemical bid, and that this would actually, one of the, one of the vendors came to us and said, you have a minimum, and we're looking for you to meet it. So what we decided to do is we have a contractual obligation. This was actually brought up in the appropriations uh, discussion that we are going to meet those appropriations. And what that means is instead of having our salt sheds filled by about 50 percent, we'll be closer to 100 percent. Okay. So this will factor into this coming winter for the two. This will get us in better shape for uh, next winter. Right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until the uh, other two councillors join us, if you don't mind.
I'm going to call a five minute break.
Okay, here we go. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> So we have the um, agenda item number 21, vote to transfer 85,000 from the sta Stabilization Fund to Snow and Ice General Fund accounts to fund the final FY 2012 Snow and Ice expenditures. I have a motion, I have a second. Do I have any, any further discussion on this item? Okay, can we have a roll call please? Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Micucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Eight yes. Thank you. Vote, uh, agenda item number 22, vote to approve the RFP for the sale of 62 Pleasant Street as presented at subcommittee on May 9th, 2012. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Micucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Eight yes. Thank you. Agenda item number 23, vote to approve the RFP for the sale of 70 Foster Street as presented at subcommittee on May 9th, 2012. So moved. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Councilor Langevin? Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to the town manager. I apologize. I walked in like 10 minutes after that meeting started, so I missed it. But uh, during reading of the meeting minutes, I was curious of what was the decision about fixing the roof? Yeah, actually, in the minutes, the, the minutes blended a couple of concepts. Um, the, there is a concept on one of the other properties we have that has roof problems. Um, and on this 70 Foster, there's two issues with 70 Foster. One issue is that the elevator is no longer in compliance, and secondly, the roof may need to have some work. And the question really before um, in this would be if someone wants to go below and needs to do work, then either they could do the work or we could, we could do the work. Uh, nine times out of ten, it's always going to be more effective to have somebody else do the work. Uh, but really, the concept I think actually the concepts were blended. Uh, the, there is roof work that's needed at the um, the 115 Pleasant Street um, project, which is unrelated to this. But on this building in particular, there are two issues that, that raise concern, actually three issues. One is the elevator out of compliance. When we started the project, it was not out of compliance, uh, but enough time has gone by. Uh, secondly, the roof has some issues, and thirdly, this was the building that had some water damage. So what I would say is that the appraisal took into account the water damage, because they did the appraisal after the water damage. The roof, the appraisers don't go up on the roof and, and scan the roof, so they were not familiar with the roof being problematic or the elevator being problematic. So there are additional concerns with the building above and beyond the as-is status that's in the uh, RFP. Uh, okay, so just making sure I follow you. So the interested party wants us to repair the roof before we sell it? This is when we've done prior tours of this facility. Yeah. We've shown people and those issues have been raised by folks as an issue with the building. No one has responded yet to this RFP. They're due in June 15th. Yep. So it's just more of a heads up to the council that this building has some unforeseen elements that we didn't know first off. And that's part of the reason that one of the things that this RFP really attempts to do is to, to give a range for people to be able to submit. So not just the appraised value of the building, but they can go lower. And the idea behind going lower is that they can take into account some of the deficiencies of the building. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else have anything on this? Roll call, please. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Micucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. <laughs> Eight yes. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Agenda item number 24. Vote to authorize the town manager and town attorney to sell by RFP nine lots on commercial drive individually or collectively with a targeted minimum total sale value of 
$270,000 toward the 10.79 acres approval not required and that the town manager and town attorney be authorized to complete all necessary closing terms to effectuate said closing. So, so moved. Second. Any discussion? Councilman Thank McDonald. You, Do we have uh, current appraisals on the property? Uh, yeah, it was included in the package. Uh, we did select a different company, uh, and the effective date of the appraisal was March 28th, and that's where the 290, two, I'm sorry, 270 number comes from, that if you take the 10.79 acres and sold it as one piece, that would be the anticipated value. Okay, so I just wanted to clarify, this is the, a newer appraisal, and I know we had talked about this last year. Has this been up to date? This is a brand, no, brand new appraisal. That's what I thought you said. Okay, very good, thank you. Anybody else have anything? Roll call, please. Council Langevin? Yes. Council Marcucci? Yes. Council McDonald? Yes. Council Nicola? Yes. Council Regis? <laughs> yes. Council Spinelli? Yes. Council Vandal? Yes. Council Clements? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Okay. Agenda item number 25. And you've all been given a handout um, regarding this vote. Um, I'm going to read it. It's first of all, the vote itself says, vote to approve the layout for commercial drive per plans and description dated May 7th, 2012. And this is how it this is how it's going to look. The town council of the town of Southbridge hereby lays out the layout of commercial drive, including all related easements shown as quote commercial drive 12. 20 acres, un, um, end quote, on a plan entitled, quote, Plan of Commercial Drive in Southbridge, Massachusetts for the inhabitants of the town of Southbridge, end quote, dated May 7, 2012, prepared by, quote, Weston, Weston and Sampson Engineers Incorporated, Foxborough, Mass., end quote. And then in parentheses it says the, quote, layout plan. And further, that the town manager is authorized to forthwith file an order of layout and the layout plan with the town clerk. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay. Roll call, please. Councilor Mikucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Eight yes. Thank you. Agenda item number 26. Vote to accept the Public Safety Consultants LLC proposal for the assessment of up to five candidates for police sergeant in an amount not to exceed $4,950 and to authorize the town manager to sign said contract. So moved. Second. Councilor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm a little perplexed at this, given the fact that the police department is civil service, and the civil service goes through an examination process to depoliticize it and to keep it more congruent. It's based on a, and a valid and reliable assessment tool that's vetted through the state. It's all done with the proper psychometrics to make sure that the, te the test and the examination is fair and equitable, et cetera. Uh, now we're introducing a performance-based assessment further with a cost of almost $5,000. The reason that I'm kind of concerned about this, or probably need greater clarification, is because the fire department, in, on the, in contrast, is not civil service. And we do employ an outside testing contractor for the written portion of it. But we're getting ready to fill the fire chief position, and we chose not to go this route for a, 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 a uh, outside agency to come in and do an assessment center because we didn't want to put the cost in there so we put together one internally to kind of save some of that cost and the disparity in that is what perplexes me as to why we're going this route with something where we already have a mechanism in place that doesn't cost us anything other than being in the civil service and we didn't do it for the fire chief thank you just uh, okay. I'll, I'll do it in a nutshell and then certainly the chief is here to, to answer but uh, the bottom line is we administered a civil service exam. Several folks signed up to take it. Uh, no one passed it. And it's not necessarily indicative of the police force because I guess 80% of the folks that took it, took it across the state did not pass it. Um, so the civil service laws do allow us to do our own exam, but you have to have uh, only 
don't know if they call them licensed or certified administrators, and this is one of the ones that is a allowable firm to administer the exam. So the reason why we're doing it is because the civil service system didn't work for us last time out. But if you want a more detailed explanation, the, the chief no. is here. No, that's fine. Thank you very much. Council Clements. Thank you. Just, um, just for information, this was uh, quite strongly vetted at the uh, subcommittee meeting, so perhaps some of us don't have questions or comments, but even the citizens' members weighed in on this, and, and we really did go to task um, on, this, on this particular item because of the costs and such. So, so I think it, a lot of the questions that, were, that are probably being thought of were really brought up and, and talked about at uh, subcommittee. So that just kind of clarification for maybe why some of us aren't as is thinking about this or we're asking the question up here in front, that's all. Just I the information we got was quite thorough. Thank you. Councillor McDonald. I'm sorry, thank you, Madam Chair. I just it did uh, one other thing occurred to me. It's I thought we were at full strength in terms of sergeants. Well, why are we calling for an exam if we are we had six as far as I understand it? Chief exam was given for. Sorry. That's what the exam was given for in the fall. And, and as Mr. Clark said, actually, the, the last two times that exam was given, there, uh, there was uh, over an 80% failure rate. So a lot of departments are, are looking at doing something like this. Uh, I, I think the people that took it worked very hard, and I, I, I know they're very capable officers, and I just didn't feel that it was a, a fair as assessment of, of their abilities. So I, I asked for this. Very good. No, I understand that. I'm, I'm agreeing with that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. No one else? Anybody else? Roll call, please. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Micucci? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 27, vote to approve the conclusion to open meeting law complaint submitted by Ann Fenwick Bynema regarding EHS meeting of August 2nd, 2011, quote, failing to include sufficient detail in the notice and minutes, end quote, and to accept revised minutes as amended May 1st, 2012. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Councillor Vandal. Yes, did um, Mrs. Bynema agree to these minutes? Has she seen the uh, redone minutes? These are not ones that are done by uh, Mrs. Bu these are not ones that are done. These ones are done by uh, Mrs. Rivera. No, no, no. I think he means does, does Ann, did Ann, Mrs. Bynema agree with the revised minutes? That's just what Is I Is that want. what you mean? Yeah, that's just what I want. Yeah, no, that wasn't that wasn't part of the attorney general's uh, decision. We just had to update the minutes through, and we did it through the recording clerk. Well, how do we know if they're if they're correct? If they weren't correct the first time, she wanted them redone. And how does she know if they're correct? I mean, how do I know they're correct? So how can I vote on this if I don't know if they're correct? The, the attorney general's office. Oh, I'm sorry, through you, Madam Chair. Go ahead. The attorney general's office has indicated what they're looking for, so we provided the information that the attorney general's office is looking for. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam. Okay. Councilor McDonald. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Just for clarification, uh, m some of it was uh, based upon some of my words that were not in the minute. So basically, the attorney general did say there was an open meeting law violation based on those two items that there weren't sufficient notes in the minutes. Much of that was, so some of that was on the words that I did, so it, like they already said, it doesn't need their approval, and I'm satisfied that it meets the intent of what went forward. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Micucci? Yes. Council McDonald? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 28. Vote to amend the Southbridge zoning map by expanding the light industry zone at the intersection of Pleasant, Walcott, and River Streets by rezoning property currently zoned to family residential to light industry as recommended by the Southbridge Planning Board. 
The property is located at 114 Pleasant Street, Assessor's Map 31, Lot 39. So moved. This second. is the third and final reading. I have a <coughs> motion and a second. Any, any further discussion on this? Okay. <coughs> Roll call, please. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 29. Vote to amend the Southbridge zoning map by expanding the general business zone along Main Street near the intersection of Main and Marcy Streets by rezoning two properties currently zoned two-family residential to general business as recommended by the Southbridge Planning Board. The properties are 80 Marcy Street and the adjoining parking lot. Assessors map 35, lots 108, 109. This is the third and final reading. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Spinelli? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Eight yes? Thank you. Okay. Agenda item number 30 is Councilor's Forum. Councillor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair, and appreciate you pointing out about the Memorial Day observances. Uh, and we still are looking, the Veterans Council is still looking for people who may have uh, convertibles or Jeeps so that we can transport some of our uh, aging veterans. Uh, and we'd appreciate all the support out there. Um, the other thing I wanted to say, Madam Chair, is I. Before you go any further, if somebody wants to. Okay. you know, bring that forward, who do they contact you? Uh, they would contact the veteran service agent, uh, Mike Trombley. Okay. And that's at 508-764-5436. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. And lastly, I do want to just say that uh, I agree with what uh, Lauren McLaughlin said re relative to the ratio of students to the nursing staff at the new school. It's not a matter of location. It's a matter of student ratio to a person being able to give adequate and proper care. So I just wanted to add my agreement to that. Thank you, Madam Chair. That's all for this evening. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Spinelli. I'd like to um, agree with John Pulowski when he got up and he spoke about that sign tonight. I um, was on my way down to Roy's Automotive and I was diverted up onto North Woodstock Road and my wife and I were dumbfounded when we read that sign that was spray painted on a board nailed to um, a light post or a telephone pole up there. It, I'm sure I've never seen anything more crude, and I know the town of Southbridge had nothing to do with it, but it's kind of an embarrassing thing when you read this and it's in red spray paint, and I mean, it's stuck out like a sore thumb. So um, Mr. Pulowski was absolutely right, and it was there, and uh, it was an insult to each and every member of the of this town to have to drive by there and see that. Um, hopefully we can have a few nasty words to the people doing the work over there because that's uncalled for. Nobody deserves to be treated like that. But we don't really know where, where that, who, who actually did that sign up, do we? Uh, I would assume that it's the crew that was doing the work over there. They were doing this whole work and it was a single lane and you were diverted to go up North Woodstock Road, you couldn't go down Main Street. Right. They had it blocked off. You could only travel on Main Street towards the center of town, but you couldn't go the other way. You had to go all the way around and yeah. then down Ashland and around. So I would assume it was them. I don't know, but it certainly was an embarrassing thing and it was just uncalled for. Okay. Madam Chair, dur during the break I did ask, uh, certainly it was not the work of the contractor. It is oh. a possibility that someone in the neighborhood may have gotten a little Maybe mm. resident. Over, overzealous. Uh, it's too bad. But we will, we will look at it in the morning and get it taken down. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it takes you too long to write something out. I'm sure you'd still be putting that together. My goodness. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anything else, <laughs> Councillor? Yes. Um, I, I would like to encourage um, everyone to become involved in a number of projects that are going on in the town. Obviously, the, uh, the, the uh, remembrance that is being planned and organized certainly is a wonderful thing. On the 31st of May, we also have a project where 
Um, a lot of people may not be able to become involved with it, but you can certainly um, um, say a prayer for those who are trying to organize this thing to make people more aware of what we have in Southbridge and what we're trying to do in Southbridge, which I think is a wonderful thing. And I would also like to support Lauren McLaughlin with the idea that uh, there should be two nurses. Um, and I think it's kind of shameful that she was kind of passed the buck along to us. I think that's not the best of um, approaches to take with somebody like that. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Landrin? I'm all set this evening. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Councilor Regis? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Just if I could, Councilor McDonald, have um, you or Mr. Trombley um, thought about contacting maybe the Central Mass Wanderer Car Club? Uh, oh. <laughs> looking for some um, older automobiles, uh, maybe to bring the veterans around in for Memorial Day. Thank you for the suggestion. Just a well. suggestion. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to um, put in my two cents too. Uh, Ms. McLaughlin came up here this evening and um, I do have a family member that works in the school department and I had a conversation with her regarding this particular issue. Um, and the, that was absolutely the advice that was given to individuals was to come here before us. Um, and I don't know if it was to ask for, for more money, but I explained as the town manager did that even if we did uh, appropriate more funding, um, there was nothing to say that it would be spent in the way that they wish for it to be spent and uh, that I fully support. So um, it, it is unfortunate that they were as Mr. Pulowski said, um, it was yeah. this. So um, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Marcucci? I'm all set. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Councillor Vandal? Through you to the town manager. Where do we sit on these railroad tracks down in Sanisdale? I don't know if the uh, DPW director is still here. <coughs> I, I know that we are looking for it. He left. <laughs> Good exit. I'll ask staff meeting tomorrow what the timetable is. Because, you know, it's way overdue. And uh, I'm going to be having a subcommittee meeting. I'm going to shoot for one day next week. And one of the agenda items is going to be to get the sidewalk from the South Village to the next sidewalk that goes to the plaza. And uh, I, w I want to wish everybody a nice Memorial Day. Thank you. That's all I have. Councillor Clements. Thank you, Madam Chair. I see Mr. Cowett has gotten to you too, Mr. Councillor Vandal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Roger's got some great ideas. That's one that I think uh, hopefully between the state and somebody we can, we can make that uh, happen. So I know they've already taken it up with traffic commission, I believe, and, and I know uh, that's been addressed a little. So that's good that it's going to be at the DPW also. Um, I just want to mention, I, I attended the Senior Expo a couple weeks back. Um, I don't think I mentioned it last time, but the, uh, I just want to applaud the Sheriff's Department for putting on a wonderful meal for the seniors. There were hundreds, um, I believe the estimation was over 250 this year, and they did a great job uh, serving, and our police chief was there, and numerous others were there helping um, with the Sheriff's Department who provided the uh, spaghetti dinner, and uh, I think it was a great event for the community, and I applaud the Sheriff's Department. And on that same note, I applaud them also for continuing their, with the probation efforts. Uh, we, my, you might notice yellow bags that sometimes appear on the sides of the highways. Uh, recently, I know in the last few weeks, I think 169 and 131, and um, those, those bags generally, and I actually saw the crews uh, a week or so ago. So if you're wondering why we have yellow trash bags on the side of the road, not in trash containers and nobody getting fined, those are actually bags that are being, it's, our, it's trash being picked up by people who need to do some community service or, or otherwise um, it's part of their, uh, they're coming out for the day and, and picking up trash. So we benefit by that, and I know that the Sheriff's Department is, is very supportive on providing workers for municipal projects. So um, those bags are not being left there. They're not uh, illegal dumping, which we tend to get a lot of, but the, uh, they are indeed there and then picked up um, afterwards. So kudos to them for cleaning our, our highways. I saw them on Worcester Street. It's, it's been a good, uh, good cleanup effort by them. So. Um, 
Mr. Spinelli's point too on the 31st, the Rediscover Southbridge campaign. Absolutely uh, wonderful, wonderful job that they're they're trying to get the people in here to uh, work on uh, getting our community out there and known. And we have a lot to offer: water, sewer, wonderful commercial commercial park, and many opportunities for purchase of property. So hopefully that will be a success uh, to all those who are working so hard. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you very much. And could we have the next meeting date, please? Monday, June 4th, 2012, 7 o'clock here in the chambers. Okay. Motion adjourned. Second. All in favor? Meeting's adjourned. Thank you all.